I know what you're thinking. What did you do to that thing? Well, I uh, Mick drizzled some DEF CON all over it. I know it looks pretty horrid. It looks worse looking at it through the camera. Uh, so the only, the only part that needed, or the parts that needed filling um, were right here. There's like a big casting pocket, not a void. It's just obviously supposed to be there for some reason, but not anymore. Um, so I filled that up and got a little piece of, uh, I think this is like Teflon or something, just some Teflon plastic and to create like a dam and uh, went all uh, mixed media today with the freaking hot glue and the epoxy and the duct tape and you name it. But it worked, uh, it worked pretty well. And you know, I like uh, the kind of person that likes to pick scabs, so this uh this might be gratifying it might not be but uh, i thought i would share you know save it for the camera so here we go one two three come on there we come nice yeah that worked uh worked pretty well so yeah, all of the uh, all the epoxy on here you see will uh, be machined away, uh, and there's actually not anything uh, being like bolted or threaded uh, into it. It's just uh, for a nice flat uh, surface so the whole uh, car is supported. Um, I'm starting to ramble here, so we'll talk about one more thing. Uh, this is looking at the end of the a saddle so the the table slides this way and of course the table used to have a gib and um, there's a hole for the gib so of course this is all going to be removed here um, so there was a hole or half of a hole from where the uh, gib adjustment screw went so I put some tape right here and uh, Mick drizzled some epoxy into there on uh, on both sides so once uh once these uh dovetails are machined off um it should look nice and pretty like uh like it never even happened hit it with some uh hit it with some paint and uh cooking with gas so we'll uh we'll switch over to a different uh, shot and um, talk about some other things so waiting for waiting for the linear rails to show up um We've been sort of bouncing around from one thing to the other. I'm always trying to, you know, stay, stay ahead of what we're working on, you know, parts wise and orders and whatnot. Um, so one of the things coming up is to start working on, um, you know, the, uh, the interface for the machine, you know, the screen and the buttons and the keyboard and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, this is the enclosure and I got a super duper 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 uh, crude rudimentary uh, mock-up of the direction you know that we're uh, heading in and um, yeah so this is the enclosure uh, I'll uh, get in a little closer and we'll talk about um, what we uh, what we talked about so the general the general idea here are the you know three components that we're looking at um, this is the actual size of the monitor um, it's a little like Asus a USB monitor, so they're like a quarter inch thick. It's pretty cool. Um, so the plan is for in like the stored state, this is how it would be if the keyboard would be up. Um, so the keyboard will fold down. Um, the keyboard is going to be, of course, bigger because it's going to sort of incorporate sort of a wrist rest and, uh, you know, somewhere to do your mousing. And uh, the screen is going to come up to here. And so you can adjust it this way. And then this whole this whole panel is gonna pivot so you can um, you know move it out this way and then move this this way. Um, at least that's the uh, that's the plan you know as of thus far. Um, I don't know if you notice, but uh, most uh, machines you see um, are the interface is like on the right hand side. Um, 
we got more space on the left hand side to fit everything on there and uh, me and Stuart are left handed so we don't you know do things the normal way um, it's like everything's backwards so uh, yeah it's uh, it should be pretty cool um, let's come in a little closer and talk about that lovely piece of termite eaten wood uh, so I promise you that we're not gonna put uh, any wood on here um, but this is just a, a stand-in for um, imagine this is a, a chunk of aluminum uh, I got a big uh, a couple like 12 feet of like two by four solid uh, bar stock aluminum left over from a job um, that is begging to be used up so we're gonna turn a big piece of uh, billet like this into a, a hollow uh, enclosure for switches and whatnot and I'm gonna build like a uh, friction hinges on all of this stuff so the uh, the pivot is gonna be right here so this whole panel will swing on this so it's sort of like a uh, how do I say that it's like a it's like an enclosure an electronics enclosure but it's also has like a built-in hinges like it's a uh, what do you call it? Like a unibody, you know? It's gonna be like a unibody enclosure slash hinge, structural, folding, friction, hinging, craziness. So I think an e-stop on the top, and then uh, one, two, three, like your red, green, yellow, and then a bunch of buttons down here for, you know, whatever you might want to do down the road. So enough looking at this wood, let's look at some metal. This is the metal I spoke about. Uh, I know, yeah, it's freaking crazy. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, um, this would be my first choice if I had to uh, pay for the material or uh, someone pay me for my time. So if those two things are irrelevant like they are here um then hell yeah let's do it man um yeah all of uh you know i'd say like 90 percent of that will be you know turned into chips uh let's get a little closer and we'll talk about the buttons and whatnot so for the switches um yeah, having never built uh, a CNC machine before, operated um, at school, I've used they got like a Hods VFO, VF0, like a VF3, um, a couple, mostly Hods stuff. And, um, you know, so that's sort of like my only experience with them uh, as far as like buttons go. You know, I know I use Cycle Start a lot, um, I use Stop, uh, Reset feed hold. Um, so that's the direction we're heading in. Um, put an e-stop on the top. Um, red, green, yellow, yellow, green, red, yellow, red, green. Uh, I'm not sure which order, but I'm thinking like a green would be cycle start, a red would be a stop, and um, a yellow would be a feed hold. And these uh, these other buttons down here, the little rectangle dudes, um, those are going to be for, you know, if you want to turn on different accessories, lights, coolant, um, air, I don't know. Um, so we'll have extras of those. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, cycle start, uh, feed hold, and uh, stop. Like, is that like a, is that like the sweet combination or like, you know, is there some button that you're like, hey, you don't have that button, but I use this button all the time. It's awesome. Uh, maybe not. So anyways, these, uh, these switches right here are cool. Um, thinking that these switches would be used much more often, you know, masher kind of switches, uh, opposed to these ones. These are. Um, these are some cool little uh, Bako switches. I think they're from McMaster. Um, but the switch body, you can do like, you know, different, um, you know, momentaries and um, use the same switch, just change out the, uh, the back. Um, 
definitely more expensive than these guys right here. Um, American pricing, Shandong pricing. Uh, these guys uh, came, I think they're from eBay. Um, they're from like Ling Li City, China. And they're like $8 for like 20 of them. And uh, they're pretty cool. I mean, you can put like a logo in there and they're lit and you know, there's momentaries and uh, yeah, so. I think they'll be just fine for uh, just fine for that purpose. I don't know if I would put them on, you know, these ones, but maybe less critical things. I don't know. So that's the uh, that's the general direction as of now, and uh, keep you updated. Oh, I didn't mention like so this this piece of bar stock will be machined hollow basically. So this top, you know, everything on the inside will be removed and then there'll be like a, a little lip around here then there'll be a panel that fits on top and all of the switches and stuff will be hooked to that panel so you can then you know pull it out and uh yeah bunch of wires bunch of wires you know it always sucks like my brother does like a lot of uh you know industrial wiring plc you know enclosures uh and he's always like, oh, you need to, you know, measure for the size of your box and then double it. And, uh, yeah, I always measure the size of the box and then half it or get one just the exact same size and it's too small and it's a pain in the ass. It sucks. It sucks working in enclosures that don't have enough room. So I'll stop rambling. Thank you. Um, we'll catch you later. Peace.